there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With over 140 channels in your vehicle, your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM Video On Demand. What you love is on now. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in to another lunchtime learning session here on CMA Connected, presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And as the, you saw with the intro video and with some exciting news coming out of Knowledge Fest Orlando this weekend, Sony Mobile ES has been making just a little bit of noise, guys. I tell you, I'm reading the comments. Uh, there's anticipation for this episode because, of course, uh, on today's episode, we're going to have the folks, our good friends from Gentech International, both Neiman and Eddie, will be joining us for the very first time. In fact, so we're pretty ecstatic about that. But we also have the man himself, Mr. Chris Bula, who's the trainer, the man behind the whole thing. He'll be joining us with a full-on presentation, everything you need to know about Sony Mobile ES. We're talking about the full range of the speakers they came up with, the subs, and yes, we're going there. We're going to be talking about this brand new head unit that everybody's been talking about. And I know Chris has got a ton of features that we want to go through and uh, show everybody you know, what it's all about and what the buzz is all about. So without further ado, we're going to go straight to our friends in Toronto over at Gentech International. They're standing by and we're going to get them on the screen and get a little dialogue going with Nima and Eddie. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you doing? Good afternoon. This is uh, great. This is this is our first time. We're excited to do this. We're we're also very very excited to have Chris Bula, all the way from you know Nashville, Tennessee, mm. the music capital of North America. If you're into music, you're gonna live in Nashville, Tennessee. A lot of people don't know much about Chris other than he's the car audio guru. But uh, I've he, actually been heard him called the 12 volt training Jesus. Well, no he joke. actually, a lot of people don't know. Prior to this, he used to be the original touring manager for uh, Carrie Underwood. Oh. And he's now learning already. Absolutely. He's a little humble. He won't, he won't admit that, but that's I, just our little secret. He's probably blushing already. Look what you did. Eddie. Oh, yeah. Um, first and foremost, Nima, Eddie, thank you for making the time. Thank you to come on. Um, you know, our pleasure. Been, our this pleasure. has been a long time coming. Gentech has been, you know, such a critical player in the whole landscape of things 12 volt in Canada for so long. You know, just early had the chance to uh, talk with the owner. Uh, and, you know, just, you know, thanks for doing what you guys do. And you guys carry some great brands. Today we're talking about Sony. We're going to have lots of opportunities to talk about the other brands on other sessions throughout the year. But today, today, it's all about Sony Mobile. Yeah. So before we talk about that, 
this is your first time. Eddie, why don't you just give us a brief? Where are you located? You know, and just who, we're, how you, give us your little story in one minute. Okay, so we're in Markham, hmm. Ontario, as some people out west would call us, the center of the universe. <laughs> I don't say that, <laughs> but so uh, we've been here. This is our thirty-first year, so we're excited about that. Wow! So thirty years in business as a distributor. As a yes, as a company, we started off mm -hmm. as a, a photo distributor and then evolved from there and added mobile audio and then added uh, some audio premium brands audio, including Sony Home Audio. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're kind of a diverse company again, based out of Markham, and we serviced coast to coast. Yeah, I think you 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 talked to. I mean, you got a large catalog. There's, if you take the time, check out the website. Lots of different categories, lots of different um, opportunities to connect with Gentech. Okay. So I see behind you, you got, you know, you guys are obviously the exclusive distributor for Sony Mobile in Canada. Is that correct? That, that is correct. All right. Sony Mobile ES, just your quick impressions about Sony bringing this to light and the excitement around it. Well, it what it does again is, and I'm half kidding, but totally serious. It, it goes back to all of our roots, why we all got into this industry, which is audio. So it, it really gives us exciting stuff to talk about, you know, and for a number of years, audio was secondary in car audio. It became mm -hmm. just about um, CD players and things like that. Now it's it's nice to go back to our, all of our roots, why we all got in this business, which is pure audio, pure sound. Yeah, the passion. Well, e, so ES, if, uh, and Chris can can correct me if I'm wrong, but it stands for elevated standard. So that, that I have a lot of expectations. If you're gonna name something like that, I figure you better be able to back it up, but I have a feeling Mr. Bueller is going to be able to back that up. So without further ado, what do you say we, we go to Memphis and, and bring on Chris? Like I said, I've always wanted to say this, live from Memphis, Tennessee. There you go. You have your opportunity. <laughs> He's live. I'm going to bring... What's going on, Mr. Bula? Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? I think you can transfer Eddie that five bucks now for that intro. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's Nashville, not Memphis. But I uh, said, oh, sorry. What is yeah. Memphis? Yeah, you oh, said sorry. Memphis. Both of you said Memphis. No big deal. It's Nashville. Nashville, which Tennessee. Is, yeah. yeah, there's several hours difference, but no big deal. <laughs> I got the right state. Right. Yeah. It's like saying up in Canada, right? Because that's yeah. pretty big. Don't you know so. Bob from Canada? Everybody knows Bob right. from Canada, right? But you're still, you're still the neighbor. Yeah, that's right. That's that. right. Perfect. <laughs> Carrie Underwood. <laughs> Carrie yeah, Underwood. Carrie Underwood. Yeah, I probably owe her a royalty now or something. Yeah, right? there so. you go. Um, so let's cut to the chase, Chris. I've been waiting for this one for a while. I, we had a chance to just chit chat a little bit during the weekend while you were over at K Fest. Lots of buzz coming out of there. You know, so many text messages coming from the show after visiting the Sony booth. Let's start back. Let's rewind because I want to get the whole picture in this one episode. I want to get the mobile ES story so that people watching this live or can watch this back can just watch and say, "Okay, I get it." So. Before we get, I know you have a presentation. Why don't you just talk a little bit about what ES, Elevated Standard, Sony Mobile ES means to Sony? Yeah, I mean, it means a ton to Sony. Um, and this is kind of one of our uh, very protected and uh, uh, very shielded brand names that we've had throughout the years. This was something on the, uh, the car audio side, the Mobile ES was introduced uh, here in the States and North America back in 1991. Um, it, it was actually released in 89, a little bit before that in other parts of the air, of the, uh, the world. But uh, yeah, so 1991, so this is actually the 30th anniversary of that original launch. So we're bringing it back. And um, you weren't, you know, you weren't kidding earlier when you said if you're going to name something an elevated standard that you kind of had to be able to back it up. Right. So um, there's been a ton of time and energy that uh, our North American team, um, you know, our, our techs, Mike Rundle up in Detroit, Michigan, Ryan Kuhlman out in St. Louis, Missouri, Jared Bali out in Phoenix, Arizona, Richard Wong out in Dallas, Texas, and of course, Anthony Tazi uh, over in North Carolina, and Rokojan over in uh, North Carolina. Uh, we've all collectively come together and given a ton of feedback to uh, our Sony engineers in Japan uh, and really kind of helped craft these, uh, these products uh, to bring to market. So we are installers by trade right we we come from that side of it so there's a lot of cool little tech features on these products that uh the technicians in the back of the bay will appreciate uh these are also very sellable as well they sound great they look great uh and they're priced perfectly right so um just a good combination of everything 
you know, I, I got to mention this. We've got a lot of installers, a lot of tech guys, shops tuning in right now, watching. I can see them coming up on, you know, guys like Sean C. Mur Murley and Justin Winfield, all these shops tuning because they want to know about it. So my question to you is, before we get into the presentation, why now? You know, we've, um, you know, Sony by nature is a little bit slow to bring new things out, right? And even the Mobile ES, this has been a project that's been going on for several years. Um, and, um, you know, we are, we like to be very sure of something, whether it's technology or the evolution of a brand or whatever it might be. And um, listen, you know, we just wanted to get back to, like Eddie mentioned earlier, the roots of what this business was all about. And uh, we've been looking for a long time to kind of elevate that standard, if you will. And this was perfect timing, right? So we've got a lot of cool new technology built into these products. It's the perfect time to kind of revolutionize this stuff, you know. Very nice. And before I let you unleash the beast of this presentation, Eddie or Nima, um, what comment do you have seeing mobile ES coming back for the Canadian market? Well, again, like it's it, it's going to shake it back up again because it's going to give us all something passionate to talk about. We like that. Without further, please, Chris, let's go ahead and let's dive in and, and, and get our learn on. How about that? Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> from Nashville. That's right. Yep. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I know mm. that a lot of people don't like, you know, kind of watching a, uh, a training session necessarily online. So PowerPoints are, are kind of boring, but um, there's a lot of good information that I really want to make sure gets across about this product. There is a ton of stuff uh, that we've done to these products to really make them not only installable, but, you know, very sellable as well. So, the more you kind of pick up on these cool features and uh, what to talk about with these products, the more successful you'll be as a retailer who has mobile ES in your back pocket. So um, without uh, without any further ado, let me get my uh, my slides going here. So, you know, the, the text on the screen, it's probably hard to read if you're on a phone, but uh, this is essentially kind of telling you what to expect out of the mobile ES lineup. You know, it is... Uh, truly what the, the best that Sony has to offer in this category. Uh, you know, the, the amount of time and engineering that went into developing these products uh, is profound for sure. And, um, you know, the, the feedback that we just recently received at Knowledge Fest in Orlando uh, was extremely positive. People that got, got to hear them in our demo vehicles, they got to see and touch and feel the product. Uh, while at the show and I, I didn't hear a single bad comment from anybody so really cool stuff for sure and then of course later uh, in this presentation we'll talk about the new head unit that was just recently announced um, and we'll go through some of the key features that that will have on it as well. I do want to make a note that yellow mm -hmm. vehicle I'm not sure what make and model that was but that was a slick demo vehicle that was in the booth. I saw some yeah, so that's that. uh, that's from John Marco. <clears throat> he's um he's in Flanagan, Illinois, and that his his Casanova. That's what he calls it. Uh, just a great vehicle for sure. Yep. All right. Good stuff. All right. So let's dive into some products. Um, you know, so when we were designing these speakers, um, there was a lot of kind of things that kind of came into play. Right. It's it's one thing to build a great speaker. Uh, you know, that sounds good maybe, uh, but maybe it doesn't look good or maybe it's not installable, maybe it's too deep or, uh, you know, some physical feature of the speaker is hard to get into a vehicle, right? So uh, we we wanted to make them very beautiful, of course. We wanted to make them uh, applicable to any vehicle that you want to put it in, of course. And, uh, and then, of course, we wanted to keep the price within reason. So this wasn't like that, you know, $30,000 pair of speakers that, you know, three people on the planet would buy, right? So. Um, when you're when you've got those three things that you're trying to manage when you're developing product, uh, it can it can get very difficult, right? Because you have to eventually choose uh, some pros and cons of going one direction or another. But I think we kind of hit the nail on the head uh, with really getting as much of each one of those things as possible. So let's bounce into our XS160 ES speakers. This is a coax. Uh, speaker and those model numbers on these new ES products are very simple to understand. So XS is just that it's a Sony speaker. Uh, the 16 is it's a 16 centimeter speaker worldwide. It's a six and a half here in the States and most of Canada, but uh, it's a 16 centimeter speaker. So it's the one six. And then that zero means there's no extra components to that speaker. It's a coax speaker. Okay. So very simple to understand when you're on the sales floor or when you're looking at your inventory. 
so peak power is 270, uh, RMS is 90 watts. We're pretty conservative when we rate these things. We follow all the CTA standards for that. Um, so you can give these as much power as you need to. Most applications won't require much more power than that, you know, especially at the RMS uh, level, but uh, you should be good to go. These are actually high res certified speakers. So uh, some of you guys may or may not realize, but to be high res certified uh, with a speaker, you have to be able to obtain at least 40 kilohertz or higher uh, in playback functionality. So of course these are fully certified. They have a 45 Hertz to 40 kilohertz range. Uh, and then these, um, these next couple things here on the bullet points are super important. And this is where we really dialed in the installability and the application of the speaker. So these have an 89 dB sensitivity rating. So with sensitivity, the higher, of course, the sensitivity rating is, the uh, you can kind of you know assume it's more efficient with the power it's being given, right? So essentially what it means to your consumer is it's louder, okay? So um, a higher sensitivity rating essentially means more volume given the same power as another speaker that's lower. Okay, so at 89 dB, we're at the top. Um, most of the competitors in this uh, category, in this range, are 83 to 86 ish. Okay, so a little bit of, of a step up there. These have a 3.2 ohm nominal impedance. Mm. So instead of just a standard 4 ohm speaker, and, and listen, there's no exact 4 ohm speaker. Nominal impedance is really a marketing term, right? But you know, 4 ohm, 2 ohm, all that good stuff, it's just easier to say. Uh, but most range between 3.6 and 4.2 ish if it's a forum speaker. Uh, ours, the nominal rating is 3.2. So you're between 3 and 3.4. Uh, but with good old Ohm's Law, you're able to now pull more power out of the power source um, playing these speakers. So combined with that 89 dB sensitivity rating, that more efficient speaker pulling a little bit more power from that amplifier or whatever head unit it's on, you're going to get a little bit more volume even, even there combined, right? So um, it doesn't do any good to have more volume and more power handling capability if you're just creating noise, right? You don't want distortion. You don't want bad playback. Uh, so we have included an aluminum shorting ring on all of our speakers, all right? What that does is it reduces and eliminates most of the magnetic flux during playback. All right, so that's what causes some distortion, especially at higher playback levels, especially across the mid range of that speaker playback. Okay, and then finally, um, a great sounding speaker doesn't do you any good if you can't put it in the car, right? So, we wanted to make these very applicable to really any application you could come up with. So, the mounting depth on these six and a halves is only two and one eighths inches. All right, so very shallow for sure. You should be able to get this in any application that requires a six and a half inch driver. Okay. And then last but not least, we have a three-year warranty on all of our high-end products and Mobile ES is no exception. All right. So good stuff. So jumping up to the 162 ES, so let's go back to that model number reference. The 160 ES was just a coax speaker. That 162 tells you that there's two component speakers in there, right? So you've got a six and a half inch woofer and a 1.5 inch tweeter. Okay. Essentially, all of the same specs as that 160 ES because it's essentially the same parts being used in those speakers, except for the addition of that uh, network crossover box. Okay, so with that, you all you do have some bi amp capability. You can run discrete channels to both the woofer and the tweeter uh, from your amplifier or whatever source you have driving these. Okay, uh, the filter points on all Sony speakers and all Sony crossovers are five and five. It's 500 hertz high pass for the woofer, 5,000 hertz high pass for the tweeter, always. That's what we designed them for. There is a 3 dB gain switch, and of course, a much smaller footprint for those of you that have installed our GS speakers in the past. It's a fairly large uh, network box that you've got. This is about half the size of that one, okay? About, about two and a half inches by about four inches total. Next up is our 680 ES. This is kind of cool. These are the only speakers in our mobile ES lineup that do not come with speaker grills. The reason for that is these are essentially designed for OEM replacement. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, this is essentially just an OEM replacement design. There's still you know, 50, 60 million of those vehicles on the road that requires these speakers. Uh, and why not be able to hook them up with a great sounding speaker, right? So uh, same exact specs as our six and a halves because it's essentially the same parts being used. 
Um, and the mounting depth is the same as well, 2.175. All right. So moving on to the six by nine. Uh, so same things applied here. We wanted a great sounding speaker, uh, minimal depth and all that good stuff. And we'll talk about some sizing in a second, but the same across the board, uh, frequency response still hits that high res capability, but bounces down to a 35 Hertz for playback. Uh, peak power is 330, RMS is 100. Again, conservatively rated. A mounting depth on these is only 2.875 inches. And this ranks uh, one of the shortest uh, speakers in, in terms of mounting depth that you can get right now, especially with this type of quality. All right. So the subwoofer is the last, uh, you know, kind of speaker that we've re uh, released in this uh, initial wave. Um, and these are kind of the tip of the spear. We will have more uh, Sony mobile ES. <clears throat> Uh, speakers coming down the road. I can't divulge the sizes or anything like that. Uh, but these are the initial rollout models. Uh, of course, the most popular sizes for sure. Uh, but uh, you will eventually have some more in that mix. This 10 inch sub has a capacity at peak of 1800 watts. RMS is a comfortable 450 watts, uh, 28 to 500 uh, hertz uh, frequency range. 90 db sensitivity which is great for a subwoofer because i've never met anybody that wants less bass out of their sub right that same 3.2 ohm nominal impedance and of course that aluminum shorting ring built in to reduce any of the magnetic flux there are two spiders on this they're both reinforced for for uh you know extreme control of that cone mechanism good stuff for sure and the 5.375 mounting depth on those all right um are we done with the speakers chris before yeah, I've got up. one more slide that's okay. really slick. I want to show uh, you guys about the sizing here. So Great. this there was a ton of research that our team did in conjunction with some, some large retailers. Uh, they have a lot of good data that they shared with us about uh, sizes and the application in vehicles, right? So if you look at both the 6x8 and the 6x9, which are the two biggest speakers in this lineup, uh, the from the mounting surface that these speakers sit on, to the top of the protrusion on that tweeter mechanism in the middle, it's only a half an inch, all right? So if you've ever worked on a Ford vehicle like the 05 to 09 Mustangs, for instance, where that plastic panel's right in front of that OEM speaker. Flush almost, you, yeah. Yeah, you would have uh, an issue with some aftermarket speakers with the tweeter you know, housing kind of pushing against that panel. It's no good, right? So with that minimal half inch clearance that you need, uh, you should be able to get this to into any vehicle that requires that six by eight. The six by nine is no different. It's also a half an inch rise off of that mounting surface. So really good stuff there. And that 2.175 depth on all the six and a halves and that six by eight, and then the 2.875 on the six by nine, those rank in the, in the very you know top of the short speaker depths. Here's something that's that's something that's kind of obvious to us, you know, when you're designing the speakers, but not quite obvious to, uh, you know, just the general user in the industry. And that is, it's easy to have like a shorter protrusion, or it's easier to have, or, or it's easy to have like a shorter mounting depth. The problem is, if you're trying to accomplish both, it's really difficult with off-the-shelf parts. So if you're just kind of using just the general run of, you know, the voice coils that are out there and all those motor parts that you're assembling, uh, you're kind of stuck. You either have to move the protrusion up or the mounting depth down to accommodate those parts, right? So we've come up with our own uh, voice coil internally that uh, allows that shortened mechanism, but still allows the excursion to be, uh, to pretty, be pretty deep on these. So pretty cool stuff for sure. I've got a few questions for you, Chris. <clears throat> yeah. I want to just go back to the the components uh, slide, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. Sure. Um, I want to commend you on the uh, basket design. I think it's very modern for a basket design. I'm not sure what the material is, but it definitely looks mm -hmm. uh, very structurally sound and, and, and very modern as a look overall. I mean, everything about it feels very modern, even the texture. I mean, I, I wish I could touch them, but this seems to be like a grit to the texture kind of, and it just doesn't look run of the mill. It definitely looks uh, very industrially designed. So, I think so let's really bounce through this uh, slide real quick because yeah. I've got some of those things pointed out here. So, uh, so the frame and the kind of the, the structure of the speaker is very important to us. The uh, the vents on the back um, and the the kind of the design of that motor structure allow air to be pushed and pulled through that voice coil and that motor mechanism. Okay, so what that does is it keeps those parts cooler uh, with that air flowing over them. Right, every time that speaker moves, you've got air moving past those things. 
uh, which is really cool. Uh, next up is that five pillar frame. So that adds a lot of structural rigidity to that speaker. Uh, and that's necessary because of this next part, which is what you're talking about. Mm. The entire frame of this speaker is a composite polymer that we've come up with. All right. So what this does is two things. One is it makes it very lightweight. These are very lightweight speakers. And second is it actually reduces the resonance of that driver. OK, so when you're mounting it to a surface, it's actually damping itself with through that material. Right. So it's the material cool. itself is low resonance. That's right. Yeah. And the finish, it's just how it's built. It's not anything particular that's on it. But you can see whether you're looking at the front or the back of these speakers, they're gorgeous. Right. We've looked at every detail for sure. All right. Um, one, one of the one of the key okay. things here, which is very important for the installer side, like a lot of installers at some point in their career have pushed on a spade terminal to a speaker and broken the tab right off. Right. Which is horrible. Uh, but these, if you're, if you break these off, you're doing something wrong to the speaker and you should stop immediately. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so even that was stuff. thought about, even that was right. Yeah. About. I mean, just the little details like that, mm -hmm. that's when you can kind of tell that installers are designing these products, you know, and then finally the mounting holes, uh, really kind of give you, uh, really a lot of flexibility to match all the aftermarket speaker adapters that are out there. Or if you're building your own, it's very easy to create a jig for them. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Before we talk about this part here, which is mm -hmm. about the selling, um, cone materials, anything you want to highlight about the cone material of any of the drivers? Yeah, so all of them are built from our third generation uh, and kind of uh, proprietary mica material. So we had a second generation on our uh, GS speakers. Uh, and great, great material, very lightweight, very rigid. Uh, this is a third generation of that same material, so a little bit more refined. Uh, everything has that same look and feel with that gray uh, look to it. That's a Sony ES gray and a Sony ES gold. So you can kind of see that on the yeah, screen with that design nice. right there. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I, I I can't, I have to ask about this very unique surround going around with the, with the indents in it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the science behind it's way above my pay grade, but um, <laughs> our engineers. But is, is it just that's what is it just aesthetic, or is there a design? No, uh, it's actually it's structurally very uh, very good for the surround. Um, it uh, it does keep that surround a little bit more intact. It doesn't allow it to get out of shape as much. Um, and during the excursion uh, and, and retraction of that speaker, uh, it holds its form and keeps that cone in place very well. So uh, again, the, the engineers came up with that, but it's, uh, it's great. And the playback is phenomenal on those. Two quick questions. Go fire them off. Tweeter. Mm -hmm. What type of tweeter is that? It is one of our, uh, it's our, uh, it's not silk. It's like a, a hybrid material that we've got on there. Very similar to our older GS one, uh, high res tweeters. It's, uh, the similar material that's in those. Uh, because these are high res certified, right? So right. we have to use Perfect. that same lightweight material. And suggested enclosure size for the 10 inch? For the subwoofer, we suggest a 1.2 cubic foot um, sealed and a 1.7 cubic foot ported. Uh, we tend to like, like the sound uh, and the tuning frequency, we tend to sound a little bit better in a bigger box than what uh, Sony Japan recommends. Um, but yeah, you should be within that 1.2 and 1.7 uh, sealed versus ported, respectively. And that's not new. It's probably because our North American ears kind of like a different sound of bass than maybe over there. Yeah, I, you know, it's different worldwide. Right? <clears throat> Every region you go to is a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Here in North America, we, we like a lot of bass for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. That, that was my question. Thank you for answering. No, oh, good. I appreciate it. So back in early May, when we um, announced, we did the, the live press feed of the new speakers that were coming out and kind of the relaunch of Mobile ES, it was pretty exciting. But this one slide was in that presentation, and it had one key term in it that I don't think anybody even noticed, and that was the video experience, mm. right? So um, nobody even caught it. No, At least nobody mentioned it to us or asked about it. Uh, but uh, you couldn't you couldn't expect us just to sit here with five speakers and be like, that's it. Right. So this like I mentioned, this is the tip of the spear with new ES products coming out. And of course, we just announced just a few days ago the XAV uh, 9500 ES head unit. So this is a 10.1 inch screen uh, floating face head unit does have a single din chassis on it. And this is uh, kind of the evolution of Sony's high-end audio that was really kind of 
Uh, it was a good attempt, but wasn't quite all there with the RSX GS9 many years ago, right? So we'll dive into some of the some of the cool features on this. The questions that everybody's going to ask, and like this is what I get in every single training and have for several years now. We've just been unable to to produce it, but Can I think all of these, oh, never mind. yeah, I was these, these do it. <laughs> yeah, wireless CarPlay and Android Auto for sure. 100%. Yeah, and then the second question I always get is. Yes, it's identical. Oh, identical, yeah. Right? There we go. There we go. We, so, like, we, yeah. like, we like getting the CAN bus info. You know what I mean? We're, we're, I tell you what, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to check some things off the list finally. So, And, and for the um, sake of our title sponsor, Sirius XM compatible? Of course, Sirius XM. Oh, right. Yeah, there we, there we go. can't go anywhere without those guys. There you go. They're Perfect. great partners for sure. So, yeah. But um, some of the cool tech that's behind this, um, you know, the, the glass itself on the screen it does have an anti-glare coating on it, but it's also a bonded glass architecture. Um, so that one of the, the reasons you get some of that reflection or that the lack of ability to see the entire display if you've got some sunglasses on polarized uh, is because of that reflection back off of the panel underneath the glass. So the, the sunlight will come down through the first layer and then bounce back up off the second layer. It's essentially what that graphic is showing you on the screen there. But um, this is this is all one piece, so there really is no reflection between those two panels. So very clear looking. It is an HD screen, 1280 by 720, so it looks great up close, and you will be up close to it. It's a 10.1 inch screen in your dash, so you're not you're never going to be very far away from it. So uh, it's kind of like having a 4K TV in your one bedroom apartment. You kind of need it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you see every pixel. But yeah, just yep. just to be clarified, this so if I'm wearing polarized glasses driving, I can still see the screen. Is that what you're saying here? Yeah, you should be able to see the screen. I mean, okay. that'll vary depending on what your environment <clears throat> is in the car, but uh, for sure, yeah, you should be able to see it a little bit better than a standard panel. Yep. And then next up, we're Sony, so we love a tactile experience. We'll never give that up, you know. So we've got some easy to use, uh, quick access. Uh, button keys across the top of it. It's home, volume up and down, track up and down, and voice activation. And then down at the bottom of the screen, you have two soft keys. And you can actually program those soft keys to really to be any function that you want, okay? So if, you, um, if you're um if you getting a little crazy and you want to flush this into an application, put it in a panel or something, you could do that. You could program your soft keys to home and something else, and then use your steering wheel controls for the track and volume functionality. Uh, and be good to go. You'd never have to access the top of that screen. Um, and these, uh, you know, as demonstrated in our uh, uh, in our booth down in uh, Orlando, we remote mounted this uh, screen in the Lexus vehicle that we had. So that is capable too. just reach out to one of our tech members for that. All right. So we've got a refreshed UI. So we are huge believers in that Sony media bar. Um, some people think it looks plain. I got to be honest with you. It's just super easy to use in a car. Um, this is something that's familiar to people who have had, you know, a PlayStation, a Sony TV, really anything with a Sony screen. <clears throat> you've got this type of UI on it, right? So uh, the difference is this is a little bit more customizable. So you can drag and drop the icons to be in the position or have the the right ones on the screen that you access the most. Uh, if you're if you able if you're able to hit that all apps button over on the, the far right there. Uh, if, you, if you've got a maestro or like a phone hooked up to it, there'll be a dozen options underneath mm -hmm. that, you know, for all the different things that you can access. So if you've got a maestro piece hooked up to a vehicle, you could have your gauge button on that first row of screen or icons there and have quick access to that while you're driving. OK, so and then there are two customizable backgrounds that are uploadable so you can put whatever background you want on those. Three camera inputs. So, uh, of course, we got the rear view camera input, uh, simple standard stuff nowadays. Uh, and then we have two extra camera inputs. Uh, we do have triggers on the harness, but it'll be a software update after the release of this in late fall uh, where those are enabled. OK, so probably January, February of next year. All right. So adjustability is the name of the game with uh, a large floating screen like this in a vehicle. Let's be honest, most vehicles that don't come with one already in the dash are not meant for a tablet in the middle of the dash, right? So you've got to kind of be able to move it around and all that good stuff. We have the standard up and down. We have the standard in and out. And we have the mostly standard tilt back and forth. Ours will tilt back and forward about 15 degrees in either direction. So you can accommodate most dashboard slopes. 
Uh, and then ours will also move left to right. Okay, so that might help you. Uh, some Toyotas have uh, like the uh, the SRS indicator on the side of the radio that you might need to see. Uh, you may have a button or a, an outlet or something that's on one side of the screen or the other that you can kind of move over now to adjust for that. All right, so physical features, um, that's, that kind of sums all that stuff up. But let's get into kind of the, the engine behind this thing, and that is this brand new ESS. Ooh, that's a mic, this is a mic drop slide, folks. Yeah, this, this <laughs> is a big deal for us, right? So uh -huh. uh, I mentioned the RSX GS9 uh, a little while ago where we kind of like set the new standard for high-res audio reproduction and really just sound quality in a car. Okay, so competitors, of course, used it for a long time. Some still do. Uh, the problem with the GS9 inherently was just that it was just that. It was just an audio reproduction machine. There was no multimedia. There was nothing else you could really do with the deck, right? So it was a bit frustrating. Uh, everybody wanted the sound quality out of it. It was just kind of cumbersome to use, right? It was primal. You know, especially in the day, in, you know, like, if you if it was your daily driver, it became very frustrating very quick, right? Not so very now handy. Done, yeah, it, for sure. Yeah. So what we've done now is we've severely upgraded that uh, with this brand new chip. This is a chip that was introduced in December of 2020, Ooh. and um, it now has all of that same audio quality that the uh, or similar audio quality that the GS9 had, uh, but also accommodates for digital streaming. So there, there is some upscaling depending on your streaming source that you can get out of this. We do have LDAC Bluetooth. So if you have a phone or other device that can stream uh, via LDAC, it is a little bit higher resolution than the standard Bluetooth uh, uh, codecs that are out there. Um, so a lot of good stuff going on the sound quality side. Uh, the bullet point at the bottom talks about some of the, uh, the sound processing and all that good stuff. And we'll get to that in just a second. And high-res audio wireless. Certified. Yeah, through that LDAC only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. If, if you've got a, a device that's compatible, it's higher res. It's not high res truly, but uh, it is higher res for sure. So similar to the GS9, uh, the GS9 was actually really good because the uh, the layer, the circuit boards in that device were separated from each other, digital versus analog, because you don't want the noise radiating from one to the other, uh, because that just becomes very, a very big mess you have to deal with from an engineering standpoint. So everything in this is shielded. You do have a digital layer and an analog layer that are fully separated. Uh, and the chassis is designed much like the GS9 was to be absolutely electromagnetic proof and uh, resonance proof. So a lot of good stuff going on here for sure. We do have uh, Sony specific parts on that board. So we have these built specifically for us in just with the, goal, the sole intent of getting the highest resolution audio playback out of it, okay? And then last but not least on the processing side, this is a pretty big deal to us. Uh, if you as a retailer or a user ever used the Sony Music Center system, you saw a precursor to this uh, with some of the, the time alignment, some of the ability to kind of adjust everything on the fly. Uh, but this is all on board on the radio screen now instead of having to hook up your phone as an extra device to it. So we do have six channel time delay. So that's what the time alignment is. Uh, you do have a 14-band graphic EQ, and then in the center, you can see that we have an 8-band parametric EQ per channel. So all six channels have that capability. All right. So a lot of good processing right in the head unit itself. Of course, if you're hooking up a processor after this, we'd leave everything flat and off uh, because you want to rely on the processor for that. But if you don't have uh, a processor coming in after this or you just want to go straight to our Sony amplifiers, you can do that and do some basic processing on the head unit itself now. And then uh, with, um, you know, this this last slide here kind of shows you the chassis. Uh, and then we'll bring uh, the Gentech guys it back in to kind of talk about how to become a, an authorized mobile ES retailer here. Uh, but this chassis is our singled-in chassis. We're, we've actually become kind of known for this with our AV head units. It allows a lot of flexibility in installation. Uh, but this is an ISO mount deck. Uh, so you'll want to screw this into whatever, uh, you know, dash kit or, uh, or uh, vehicle that you're uh, working on. It does have a GPS antenna connection, which is a little bit different than our current AV decks. Uh, that's because of the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, and then it is the same Sony harness. So if somebody wants to upgrade from their older Sony AV deck to this one, 
simple plug and play. You just throw the GPS puck in there and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, of course, we've got RCA only. There is no toss link. That'll get asked in the comments. There is no toss link on this one um, because we're just huge believers in RCA out for high, high res quality uh, audio output. Um, and then there is a USB-C on this, not a USB-A. We do include an extension in the box. Uh, you can see it on the screen there. And we do have a clip that locks it into that recessed USB-C port so it can't come out while you're pushing the radio into the dash. Uh, but you will have to accommodate that with an adapter or something else if somebody's hooking up a standard USB-A cable to it. Okay. So with that, that's it. That's all from my end. On the, uh, uh, slideshow there. Well, first of all, thank you so much for that presentation. I, I have a couple of questions with regards to this sure. particular unit here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, I'm going to bring uh, Nima and Eddie back here. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <clears throat> I'm sure you, you guys might have some questions first. If you don't mind, I, I'm just going to go ahead and ask one or two that I have here. So I, I my, my first comment is I, I think Sony was really smart on this because they recognize that they want to have the ES brand, the mobile ES brand. So with that elevated standard, they're going to have to deliver on the audio side of things. So, you know, with that new chip, which is super exciting, it's a brand new chip, guys. Like, let me just be clear, and I'm going to ask Chris on the spot: Does anybody else have this chip? Yeah, nobody else has this chip. This okay. was uh, this was actually uh, released in December of last year, here, 2020. So, like, that's the uh, newest the chip on the ones. block. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, why it was to my comment of why I think this is really smart is this is a, a addressing that. Might dare I say, audiophile clientele, the ones that really want that really great audio experience. But man, I'm sorry, if you're gonna put upgrade your radio in your car, you gotta have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto these days. You gotta have those features because it's just, that's not how we roll anymore. That's my comment. That's my main comment. And I'm very excited to see the quality of that screen because obviously Sony is renowned for their screens and the performance under, you know, like you were mentioning with the polarized lenses, um, I think that's critical. Uh, today, you know, people just can't accept if I move too far away or if it's too sunny and I can't see my, you know, head, that doesn't make sense anymore. You know, I think it was okay five years ago, but I, I'm, I'm very confident Sony's done a great job with that. So good job on that. Last but not least, um, the little things, you know, the USB-C, um, the gold-plated connectors that I saw in there as well, and the fact that you can put this thing into any application that fits a radio. That's, I was worried that it had to be like, certain space. I didn't know it was a single DIN chassis until I just saw it now. Um, so I thought that was brilliant. Nima, Eddie, what do you have to add? So I'm super excited about this uh, uh, Sony Mobile ES head unit, especially that it's a single DIN chassis, fully versatile. It can go to any vehicle. I uh, love the fact that it has external GPS antenna. Mm. Again, we're not going to have any issues with uh, signals. And uh, also, I love how the way it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's a way that uh, existing Sony customers can upgrade to the new mm. platform by still using the 16-way harness and not having to rewire the entire vehicle to get into this um, upgrade. So yeah. overall, I'm happy. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, all Sony team, for giving us this um, opportunity with uh, Sony Mobile ES, and I think. Canada is going to do really well. We already have a lot of uh, dealers inquiring about it, and we'll share all that information shortly. Eddie, what about the speakers and the sub? What, what's your comments well, that, on that? That's exactly where I was going to go. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't have good audio without speakers. That's really the bottom line. And as I started this whole presentation, I said it's attention to going back to the passion of audio. And quite frankly, audio starts at speakers. Everything I, You're only as good as your speakers. So Sony spent a lot of time re-engineering and, you know, putting in high-end type features and materials into a speaker. But the most important thing, they make sure they were slim and not, and make sure they were working real world cars. So that's, that's the exciting part. The fact that it's high end and the fact that it will work in cars. That's des that design mentality. I can see it throughout the entire line. You know, you just mentioned, nailed it on the head. The fact that it will fit all applications, same thing with the radio, the head unit, it fits. So it's not this, three percentile of people that'll be able to accommodate and do whatever it takes to get it in. That shouldn't be the philosophy ever at this point. It's how many people can we get this to, not how many applications can we get this to. And I, I really commend Sony's design team for, for keep being mindful of that. You know? Absolutely. And also, um, I guess we got to talk about um, some of the other highlights that Chris already talked about. Sony Mobile ES comes a three-year uh, warranty on their speakers and head units. So it gives the uh, uh, 
uh, the confidence um, to the dealer, to the end user that they're going to have a good working product for an extremely uh, long lasting time. And at the same time, it's hassle free. So uh, our uh, dealer base uh, will look after the customer with, uh, without uh, any hassle and uh, us here at Gentech will back them up to make sure that that product is going to be available if in the event needs to be replaced though. So, so on that note, I think it's a perfect time to bring up the question. If I'm a dealer, can just anybody get mobile ES? Like what's the no. deal, how does that work? No, there's a whole process, a vetting process. Basically, you know, uh, number one, you have to be a Sony dealer. Mm -hmm. And to be a Sony dealer, that means you have to be a supporting dealer. So what we what we really want to do is we, we want to reward first the supporting dealers along the way that have supported us for a number of years. And then anybody wants to join the family now needs to support the Sony brand, not oh, just yeah. mobile ES. And you know what? I don't, wouldn't expect any anything else. I mean, if you're going to support the brand, you need to be all in on the brand. I don't think that you know shouldn't be criticized for that. I think that's just how it, the way the world works and how business, good business and partnerships work. So just to, to, to be clear, so the dealers who are watching this, like I said, either live or on demand, are there opportunities still to become Sony dealers in Canada? Absolutely. Okay. Either, either reach out to your individual rep in the territory or reach out to one of us. Yeah, you know, I had the, I had the digits going. I'll put them up one more time, just in case you don't know. So right here on the bottom of the screen, there you go. If you're looking for Sony Mobile ES products in Canada, you got to contact Gentech um, website. Give them a call, and uh, they will consult you on what the next best steps are and what the requirements are. Um, how important is that, Chris? I mean, to 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 ha to have that protection of that brand. I mean, you know, is it or 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 do you think that's something that's dated? Are you talking about protecting mobile ES? Yes. I think it's super yes. important. Yeah, yes. I mean, listen, um, you know, one of the things that Sony's kind of uh, done really well for a long time is um, we've been a source for things. And what I mean by that is we've had certain units uh, or products in our lineup that were really good for a couple things, right? So our AX7000 is great for motorcycles and power sports vehicles. Um, our, you know, you, you'd pick and kind of choose as a retailer what kind of fit your business model. And that's great. That was fine with us. No problem at all. Uh, the evolution of that with the Mobile ES introduction is that uh, we still love all those retailers, of course. I mean, they're they're the core of our business, right? But with Mobile ES, we've we've had a lot of retailers that have for a long time really kind of been waiting for us to take the next step, and they've been very loyal to us and they've supported us through thick and thin. Um, and we're now finally able to give them product that they deserve. And those guys that have been supportive of us, uh, they're going to see the support back to them through this new lineup. That's a very good answer. Um, what can we expect? Sorry, how do I word this? Can we expect more from mobile ES, more SKUs, expansion? That's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah, uh, there's a ton of, so I say this in every train, there's a ton of new cool stuff coming. Uh, so it's, um, this stuff has been a long time in development and we are still in development, um, if that gives you any indication. So mm -hmm. there are new pieces coming. Uh, you'll see uh, quite a few new pieces throughout um, the next year and a half, you know, calendar wise. Uh, and it's just going to continue. Right. So we assume this is going to be a raging success. The speakers are just, you know, I mean, they sound great. Once you get your hands on them and you hear them, you're going to be like astounded that uh, uh, that they're at the price point that they are. And uh, they have the Sony backing. Right. Uh, which is super important. But the head unit that you see here, uh, there there may be more of those in the future. There will be other products in the future. Just a lot of cool stuff coming for uh, sure. Hello. So stay tuned. How am I going to power this stuff, guys? Right? Like, <laughs> I want more of the SD listen, control, we Chris. Excellent. Listen, we still have high res, very good amplifiers in our no, GS. No doubt. Lineup. But does it have oh, the ES yep. logo on it? Because uh, you're kind of selling me on that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's all. Just saying. Yeah. So use GS for now. That's all, all right. right. So. That's the corporate message. You heard it from Chris. Use GS That's for right. now. Uh, yep. You know what? I just I have to do a little retraction. I was showing the digits. I had the fax number on Eddie and Nima. Sorry, my bad on that. There's the real number 905-513-7733. That's who you need to call Perfect. when you want to get in on some mobile ES action. Uh, Chris, I don't know if I'm going to leave you the last word here to talk to our Canadian dealers. Any message? You know. If guys are hesitant, you know, yeah, you know, Sony, do I really want to, what message do you have for them? 
You know, I think the most important thing for a retailer um, who maybe isn't as familiar with us as, as we'd like them to be is that we've always got the retailers back and uh, we choose our distribution partners very well. Gentech is no exception to that rule. Um, and they, of course, have your back as well. So from a support standpoint, to be a Sony retailer is a very good experience overall, right? Uh, just from the, you know, from the products, uh, we were one of the last ones with any availability for head units during the whole lockdown thing. And we are still do busting our butts to really kind of keep that trickle going. It's nowhere near where anybody wants it right now, but we are doing everything we can. And your distribution partner in Gentech and, and many others through the states here have had your back as well and kind of helped us out with that effort. Uh, so um, from a support standpoint, you can't get any better. Uh, and then from a product standpoint, I mean, we've had very good, very reliable product for a long time, but it hasn't necessarily been really like super exciting, right? And it hasn't had the latest cutting edge features. Now we're solving that. So I think now's the time to get on board, contact Gentech, uh, or if here in the States, if, you're, uh, if you've got another local uh, distributor, contact them about becoming an ES, uh, mobile ES retailer. And uh, let's get on board. Let's start rocking it. Very good, sir. I'll let you get back to taking care of uh, Carrie Underwood and doing what you need to do out there. And <laughs> I, so just, yeah, disclaimer, I have no idea. <laughs> I, for the record, I started that rumor. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> There's a source of your of your distress. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Bula, thank you so much for spending the time and sharing with us everything, all the goodies from Sony Mobile ES. We really look forward to hearing more. And I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of comments on this one. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Eddie. Thank Thanks, Eamon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, all. Thanks, all Ben. Right. Chris, uh, Eddie, stay there for a second. Um, that's pretty exciting stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, it's it's been a while since we talked about this category, you know, head units. I'm so excited to be talking about it. But to come in with something so heavyweight, something so well thought out, I know you're going to get calls about this. People are going to be interested in it. So let, let's, 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 um, let's set some expectations here. What are timelines we're talking about here as far as delivery on this type of product? Because this is brand new. I'm not expecting right. it to be ready now, but just to give an idea. Speakers are in stock now. Oh, yep. Okay. In, we, we have them in stock in Markham. Uh, head unit is November, and the rest is to be announced. Right, but you're taking pre-orders on that unit right now. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, we are. Absolutely. Um, I'll give you guys the last word. You guys are on CMA. Was this experience everything you thought it would be? And then some. And then some. <laughs> You know, our goal here is just to get the information out, right? When something exciting comes along, we're excited about it, and we want everybody to know about it. I can tell you right now, we've got some great viewers and some great people are on there already commenting. It. I, I haven't even followed you. I was so enthralled with what Chris was saying. I didn't even get a chance to really throw it. But um, last but not least, uh, as far as Sony as an overall brand, we've got other episodes where we're going to come back and talk about the other stuff, right? Right. Yes, we are. All right, because there's a lot. There's a lot to it. It's not just about mobile ES. There's a whole line of well, products like you see behind you. And as we do more of these on the Sony brand, uh, we will be able to share some more of the what's coming. Oh, see, obviously, some people here know more than I do. That's okay. We'll get it out to you soon enough. It's just a question of time. Mr. Nima, Mr. Eddie, thank you so much uh, for joining thank us today on this uh, on this session. Thanks, guys, and thanks thank for you. all our supporters for the years. All right. We'll see you soon back here on CMA Connected. Take care, guys. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks. There you have it, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. See a lot of cool people up in the, in the audience, but that is a cool product launch. And that's what the industry needs, man. Companies to continue innovating, companies to continue pushing the envelope, listening to what the customers want, adapting features so that installers can make their customers happier and their lives better, and just elevating that whole experience. Because, like I said, nothing we sell here we need we just make it so that people want it hey that's it from this cma connected presented by sirius xm i'm i'm your host ben Wu. i hope you enjoyed that one that was sony mobile es with gentech uh for all my canadian friends here let's have a great long weekend canada day uh be mindful of everything that's going on of course um we won't get into politics but you know what i'm referring to let's be mindful of that respectful of that but have a great holiday with friends and family and uh to our american viewers you know have a great long weekend as well um, and on that note, we will see you tonight for CMA Live, our last one before the long weekend, where it's all about pro audio. Make sure you tune in at 8 p.m. Eastern for tonight's CMA Live Pro Audio. That's it. Until next time, we connect. Mm -hmm.